Today on the show, we're going to talk about the death of Wolverine and the death of my favorite comic of the year, She-Hulk. It's dead? Canceled. Yeah, get it, baby. So first up, let's talk about Audible and the books I've been listening to. Uh, I just finished up The Disaster Artist by Greg Sestero What's and that? Tom Bissell. This book is only for people who have seen the movie The Room. What is that? The Room is the Citizen Kane of bad movies. Uh, it is a movie written... What's Citizen Kane? Produ Ugh, fuck, man. I can't go back. It's like a really good movie, okay? Uh, everyone thinks it's great. What's The Room? Okay, so The Room is a movie that is written, produced, funded by, s directed by, starring Tommy Wusso, one of the weirdest motherfuckers on the planet. I'm convinced he's a reptilian. I think he's an alien. I'm not entirely sure. I think What's he's a reptilian? Rogue. That's a whole other fucking episode. Okay, we don't have time to get into that. But the disaster artist, I feel like if, if you like The Room, and everyone should watch this. If you're into bad movies, you really have to watch this because you will be left with your jaw open. Why would anyone want to watch a bad movie? You will think, if I'm from like the old school Mystery Science Theater 3000 bullshit where I just love watching bad movies. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny. What's up? I have a problem with Lisa. She said that I hit her. <laughs> What? Well, did you? No, it's not true. Don't even ask. What's new with you? Well, I'm just sitting up here thinking. You know? And like the thing about this bad movie is that they were trying so hard, you know, and like Tommy Wiseau just believes in this fucking project so much. Like he wanted, he wanted to submit this to the fucking Oscars, okay? And this book is written by a guy who starred in The Room. Uh, he stars opposite Tommy Wiseau as Mark. Uh, oh, hi, Mark, if, if you know that whole thing. And uh, it talks about how he met Tommy Wusso, how he got involved in the room, how he got involved in acting. Apparently, he was also in Retro Puppet Master. It's a whole other thing. So, but... Mm, time is ticking. Okay, I'm okay, sad. okay. But the, how I'm going to sell you on this book is instead of buying it, I would highly recommend the audio version because Greg Sestero does a fucking spot-on impression of Tommy Wiseau, which is fucking amazing, okay? That dude should, like, fucking go on the road with that shit because it's awesome. I'm sure that... So you're telling me there's a movie called Citizen Kane that's really good, and then there's The Room, which is really bad, and people are supposed to watch bad movies for some reason, and then there's a book called The Disaster Artist, which is about the making of The Room. I and I'm supposed to download that on audible.com. Well, okay, yes. You're supposed to download it on audible.com. You can get a free month if you go to audible.com slash comic book girl. Uh, you can sign up, and it's so awesome because the thing is, is if when you sign up, there's it's like... Every month you get one free credit, you know? So essentially you get one free book every month, which is pretty fucking awesome. I have not bought any books on there in a while because pretty much it takes me a month to listen to a book and then I have a credit and then I just get whatever book I want. Time is up. Time's up. Audible.com. So first things first, this is a wake or two things. What's a wake? That, well, it's where you get fucked up and drunk because somebody died that you liked. Is that why we're all wearing black? Yes. And then we got black curtains. It's all black. We got booze. Who died? Uh, Wolverine and my favorite Wolverine is comic. dead? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, he's dead. Wolverine can't die. He's been dead for like three or four weeks, dude. He's one of the most important characters. You know, he is Marvel's cash cow. That is for sure, you know, and they did have him in. Oh my gosh, you're not lying. It is real. <laughs> it's real. It's real, and they have holographic covers. Uh, Ooh, the, that's probably going to worth money someday. Oh, yeah, I'm going to retire on this fucking show. How did he die? Uh, Well, do you want me to spoil it for you? How did he die? He has a healing factor. This is impossible. Well, okay, this so... This is an outrage. Well, he lost his healing factor uh, in the Wolverine title from a sentient virus from the microverse. It, like, possessed him, and it shorted out his healing factor or something. I mean, he went to Tony Stark, he went to Beast, he even went to Reed Richards to fucking figure this shit out, and, like, he couldn't get it figured out, so he was like, whatever. But what are they gonna do without Wolverine? What are we gonna do? What are we going to do? Nothing. We're going to keep buying comics. Uh, nobody who really reads comics is really upset about this because we all, we've already been through this. You know, people who read comics have already known that they'll kill some up, somebody off and then they'll come back and whatever. Just like they killed Peter Parker off, in my opinion, for the better. But now Peter he's Parker back. Peter Parker is dead? <laughs> he's, he's already back. Don't worry about it. Oh. oh. 
Honestly, I really like Superior Spider-Man with Doc Ock in the body of Peter Parker a lot better than Peter Parker's Peter Parker, but whatever, that's a whole other thing. I have no we, idea what you're talking we've about. We've already talked about that in another episode somewhere. Well, I didn't watch it. So, was I in that episode? Maybe. I have no idea. Well, then I didn't watch it. I think Kirk was, actually. Um, but anyways. Who's Kirk? <laughs> you're killing me today, robot. So anyways, uh, don't worry about it. He'll be back in six months to a year. It's not a big deal. Uh, in fact, you know, honestly, my personal feelings on the subject. Do you want to know my personal feelings on the subject? Uh, on the death of Wolverine? Yes. Yes! Are you angry? Are you angry like me? You know what? I am angry like you, but for different reasons. I'm angry because Wolverine was in the middle of, like, an amazing transition where he was becoming a better person. Like he had given up doing the X-Force deal where he was like assassinating people. He was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm the headmaster of a school. He had really focused his shit on the school, on the, the Jean Grey school for gifted mutants. He was really doing that. Also, he had a fucking amazing relationship with Storm. They finally, I mean, they've been together, like they've been together before, like in the 80s, but in like the apocalypse future is a whole other thing. But he has a relationship with Storm right now, and they're so cute together. And, like, I just love fucking Storm and Wolverine together. They're so hot. And she got so upset because of Wolverine's death that Beast had to take her into fucking space so she wouldn't destroy the planet with her fucking emotions because you know how her emotions are tied to the fucking weather and shit. So if she got upset on Earth, like, the whole fucking Earth would suffer for it. So she went up in space and she let her grief out in a big thing and it caused this beautiful aurora borealis that the entire world saw as her mourning for like the death of her lover, you know? And it's just like, and he's like the headmaster of the Jean Grey School for Gifted Mutants, you know? He's trying to turn it around. He's trying to like help kids and stuff like that. And like, what? it just doesn't make sense to kill him now, okay? I don't agree with it. So all I'm trying to say is, is that Wolverine... Logan started off as this berserker character with a bad chip on his shoulder, with a bad attitude, you know, he was kind of the loose cannon on the team, and that he's finally become a person, and that I feel like it's very tragic to take him right now when he's in the midst of a personal transformation. However, uh, a lot of other people, and I don't necessarily disagree, will say that it's good that Wolverine has been killed because he's oversaturated in the market, he's in way too many titles, you know, I mean, he is Marvel's cash cow, and they do treat him as such, and it will be nice to kind of get a break from Wolverine for a minute. But in my personal opinion, I feel like they didn't need to kill him off. They just should have taken him out of the million titles that he's in and just focused him in one title. And that, and I think that would have been sufficient. But So how did he die? You never told me how did he die. Do you want spoilers? Yes. Okay, well, let me give it to you. Death of Wolverine in a nutshell. Spoilers. Here you go. All right, so there's a contract put on a Wolverine by nobody knows who, and that all these killers have come to come get him because the word is out that he doesn't have his fucking healing factor anymore and everyone's like gonna like beat him up and all this stuff. So eventually he finds out that the contract was done by Viper and Magipore. So he goes to Magipore to confront Viper where he's confronted and then fucking Sabretooth is there, but he's like, don't kill him now because he's like all fucked up from Viper's bullshit, which is true. Uh, and then he's like, fuck you, Wolverine, because Sabretooth and Wolverine are always like that. Whatever. And then him and fucking Kitty Pride go to Japan, which was really awesome because Japan plays such a big role in fucking Wolverine's life, you know, I mean, the whole thing with, like, I don't know. We, we, that's a whole other story. Anyways, so he finds the Weapon X program back in America. The whole story ends in America, uh, where he's done a lot of his superheroing, and he meets the man who made him, the man who gave him his adamantium skeleton, and he ends up saving humans, not even mutants. He saves humans. Uh, from his crazy bullshit experiments and... What was his experiment? Well, he was trying to create, like, the perfect soldier. Because, like, with Wolverine, like, he's like, Wolverine, you're an animal. You're just nothing but an animal. And, I, you know, you can't control you. But with these people, I'm going to try to, like, make them to where they're, like, easily controllable. I don't know. It, it, his part wasn't the strongest part in the whole thing. But... In the end, you know, Wolverine found peace, and I really like that the doctor was like, dude, what have you ever done? What have you ever done in this life? And then Wolverine thinks back across this two, this splash page, fucking two page deal, and he sees all these moments from his life, and he's like, I did enough. And then he dies, and it, I thought that was really nice. But why did he die? I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. 
Okay, well, there's all this animantium that was getting ready to go into all these patients that this guy was, like, fucking with all these experiments. So he destroyed the animantium thing with his own claws, and all the melted animantium got all over him, and he's covered in it. And then he goes out to kill that guy, and the guy's already dead. And then he just, like, sits in the sun and, and like, hardens and, like, is in this peaceful, like, stance like this. And then that's it. So he dies covered in animantium. Adamantium. You know what I'm talking about. Oh. Okay, so how significant is the death of Wolverine? Well, knowing that Wolverine will be back, I don't think it's, you know, the most significant, but I think that everybody who worked on it brought their A game. Everybody who worked on it did a really good job of trying to incorporate all of things from Wolverine's past and all these different storylines and stuff like that, so. And although the death of Wolverine may be kind of sad to some of us, but mostly nobody's sad about it, the real tragedy is the fucking cancellation of She-Hulk, also written by the same guy, Charles Soleil. That is what you should be fucking mad about. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Okay, well, I have talked about it on like every Plopcast. Like anytime I have a chance to talk about fucking She-Hulk, I've talked about it. In fact, I wanted to do a whole episode about it, but now that it's being canceled, it's like, God damn it. Like every time there's a good fucking title that I really like, that I'm into, it always gets canceled. Ugh, you know, they gave it 12 issues. It's got three issues left. It's on issue number nine right now. I just bought a couple of these because I was like, maybe they'll be cool, whatever. And I just fell in love immediately, okay? I fell in love with the character of She-Hulk for the first time in my life. What does she do? She's so awesome. Okay, this focuses more on her being a lawyer than her being a superhero, which I think is far more fucking interesting, okay? Because she handles all these fucking really weird, like, cases, and she's gonna deal with all these weird superhero problems and all this stuff. It's just so refreshing. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And and they've reintroduced the character of Patsy Walker Her Hellcat, who, okay, first of all, Patsy Walker is from like the 1940s, 1950s golden age Marvel like romance fucking teen things that was going on there. And then somehow she ended up becoming a part of the fucking, I don't know, Marvel superhero line later on as Hellcat. Married Damien Hellstrom, the son of Satan, and saw his darkness and went insane when she saw it and then ended up killing herself but then was brought back. So she's got a lot of psychological problems, okay? And she's so much fun in this. Like, I totally want to cosplay as her now, okay? She's so much fun. And Charles Soleil has also introduced the character of Angie Huang and her fucking capuchin monkey hi-hi, which I don't even know what their deal is, okay? They got some weird... No, no, no. They got some weird powers, and, like, they better explain that shit before fucking issue 12, or I'm gonna be pissed, because I don't know what their deal is, but I really want to know, because it's so interesting. Well, and and that's, that's the thing about this whole comic, is, like, it's just rife with all these really fun interactions with her between, like, Tony Stark, uh, who she used to date, like, off and on. So it's like, that's a really fun little deal. Uh, her and Daredevil, who's another superhero lawyer that she gets in, like, fucking lawyer tangles with, which is really awesome. And she even has a really hilarious fucking deal with uh, Shocker, who is a part of this blue file, this mysterious blue file, where there's this legal case against her and several other supervillains and superheroes, and she's trying to figure out what's going on, but... Anyone who remembers this case gets in this weird hypnotized mode where they try to like kill someone and then kill themselves and it's this whole thing and they better fucking resolve it before issue number 12, which I'm told that they will, but it's a whole thing. The thing about She-Hulk that's so awesome is the fact that they bring up all these like really weird superhero problems like where is she gonna get an office at? Because most offices won't let you rent from them if you're a superhero because their insurance in their building is gonna go sky fucking high, you know? And also, she's got to deal with, like, saving Captain America's reputation in the courtroom and all this other stuff. I mean, and also, her relationship with Patsy Walker is really great. They have ups and downs, and, like, Patsy feels like she's, like, not trusting in her because Patsy Walker doesn't have any real powers. She's just, like, a crazy lady in a cat suit, you know? And, like, they get drunk one night and infiltrate an aim base, and, like, it's this whole thing. I don't know. It's really great. I've been here the whole time. I don't know where you guys have been. I've been telling you to read this, and now you haven't read it, and now it's being canceled, and now I'm upset, and I have to drink. They feel like real problems that superheroes would have. I mean, it talks about all these things that would go on if you were a superhero, you know, that you they don't ever talk about in other comic books that Ish. I find really fun. She-Hulk makes the Marvel Universe feel like a more believable universe and like a more relatable one that you could jump into. And this is like, this title is so good for new readers. I mean, you could just pick this up and start reading it if you're a new reader. It's not a big deal. 
It's not a big deal. You can totally read this. I'm not sure I like how the art is done. It's not drawn good enough for me. There's not enough lines and cross hatching. You know, let me tell you you're wrong and let me tell you why, okay? I know a lot of people out there on the internet and I've heard a lot of people talking shit about the art in this and man, fuck you because I love Harvey R. Polito. I love how simple and stylized it is. It's such a breath of fresh air. It's so different than anything that's going on right now. It's so much fun. Like, I just fucking love it. Like, as a girl, I love this, okay? And the thing is that about the art that's so great is like, it just keeps you reading the story. Like, you don't even, not to say that you don't notice the art, but it's like, it just keeps it moving so well. And like, the timing is so perfect. And like, the shots that Javier selects are, are just great. I mean, it's just a very solid art style. It may not be enough cross hatching for you, and it may not be enough muscles and all this crap, but, Personally, as a female, I love this art. It's fun, it's different, it's fresh, and I wanna see more of it, and it's solid. <laughs> so here's the thing about She-Hulk. You should go out and buy it, okay? At least go buy the trade paperback. Uh, you know, I know the first one's out with the first six issues, so you can even get it on Comixology. Go get them digitally, like whatever. Just go buy them, because maybe, maybe if they see that we buy enough of these, they'll like, have another She-Hulk Charles Soleil comic, which I really wish because he's so perfect at this comic. Did you know that Charles Soleil is actually a fucking practicing lawyer? And he's writing about lawyer stuff? Okay, this is a superhero law and order and it's super great. And like, you guys are totally not buying it for some reason. I thought everybody I talked to was like, this is fucking amazing. Everyone I know is like, oh my God, She-Hulk. And I thought that this was selling like wildfire and I, I thought that I didn't have to do this. But maybe, just maybe, if you go out and buy the trade paperbacks, the first collected edition, and then the second one when it's done, buy that, and maybe we can get another Charles Soleil She-Hulk title going, you know. I know that like, this might not be the end of She-Hulk because they may reboot it and do something else. I mean, that's happened before with other titles, so I'm really hoping that they're just gonna reboot it. So I'm getting the idea that I should go buy She-Hulk. So in conclusion, check out audible.com slash comicbookgirl to get a free month of Audible. Also, check out Death Wolverine if you want to be up and up on the X-Men continuity, but he's dead, so, you know, that's really all you need to know. And third of all, friggin' pick up the trade paperback of She-Hulk or Comixology or whatever. Just buy it. Just buy it and let Marvel know that this comic is awesome and that we love it and that we want to see more She-Hulk in the future. Because if she's gone, like, oh my gosh, I'll be so sad. Like, I'll be so sad, guys. Because she's like my total favorite. So thanks for watching. That's it for today. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And also like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and if you didn't know, we are working on finishing our cosplay calendar for 2015 right now. It should be out by the end of November, beginning of December. It will be on comfortable19.com. But if you follow me on Facebook, you would know that because I'm going to post an update on there. So.